so it's an outline of uh, this lecture or the uh, the topics that are uh, going to be covered in uh, this lecture and that uh, are the types of the inflorescences then uh, mechanisms that facilitate self and cross pollination then growth of the pollen tube and double fertilization will also be discussed followed by the life cycle of angiosperms and uh, we will also be talking about uh, the evolutionary advantages of the seeds then fruit development and classification of the fruits will also be discussed and we will also talk about the evolutionary links between angiosperms and animals and we will also discuss the products that are developed from the seed plants let's first discuss the uh, types of the inflorescence so as i just mentioned that inflorescence is an arrangement of flowers on a shoot of plant okay there are three major types of inflorescence along with three special types of inflorescence okay the three major types are racemose inflorescence cymose inflorescence and compound inflorescence while the special types of inflorescence that are not very common in plants uh, they are uh, present in uh, some of the plant varieties these are hypanthrodium cyathium and verticillaster okay so in total there are six types of inflorescence in which three are major while the other three are special types the first major type of inflorescence is known as racemose inflorescence it is the type of inflorescence in which the main axis is elongated and it does not end in a flower okay but it grows continuously and the flowers are arranged on it in an acropetal manner what is meant by acropetal manner it means the lower most or the outer flowers are older than the upper or the inner ones okay like the lower flowers are developed first and then the upper flowers develop then there are three major categories of uh, this type of inflorescence and the first category is where main axis is elongated second category is where main axis is shortened while the third category is where, uh, where the main axis is flat it is diffused it, okay so uh, the first category according to the first category which, where the main axis is elongated there are five subtypes of this inflorescence okay and these five subtypes are raceme spike spikelets catkin and spadix let's discuss all of these types in uh, one by one in detail okay in case of a raceme inflorescence the main axis is elongated and it bears stalked flowers as you can see in the image that is given on the slide okay so raceme is an inflorescence in which stalked flowers are arranged on the main axis okay while spike is a type of inflorescence that is just like raceme but here the main axis is elongated and it bears non stalked flowers that is the flowers lack stalks okay they do not have stalks while the third type of racemose inflorescence uh, under the category of uh, where the main axis is elongated is known as catkin and as you can see in the image that is given on this slide uh, here in this type of inflorescence the main axis is uh, fleshy and drooping and it bears hermaphrodite flower okay what is an hermaphrodite flower that contains both male and female sexual organs 
Spikelet is a type of uh, inflorescence where the main axis is elongated and it bears two to three or sometimes multiple flowers on it okay and the example of spikelet inflorescence is wheat okay as you just uh, as you must have seen uh, uh, the spike of the uh, wheat and uh, in other words it is known as like uh, gandum kasitta okay so that type of inflorescence um, is known as spikelet okay while uh, the fifth type of uh, the main axis where the main axis is elongated uh, is known as spadix okay so spadix is a type of inflorescence in which all the flowers or the uh, sessile flowers non stalked flowers they are developed on the main axis which is elongated and the whole inflorescence is enclosed in a bracket like structure that is known as spathy okay so this type of inflorescence is known as spadix so spadix is a type of inflorescence in which the whole inflorescence is enclosed in a green spathy it is a leaf like structure it is just like a blade of the leaf okay the whole inflorescence is enclosed in it okay so these are the five types of racemose inflorescence in which main axis is elongated okay then the second category of uh, racemose inflorescence is that where the main axis is shortened and uh, the under this category there are two types of inflorescence one is known as corium and the other one is known as umbel okay where the umbel as you can see in the image is just like an umbrella okay so here the flowers are arranged on the same level and they possess the stalks of same size okay stalks of same size they arise from one point on the axis of the on the main axis and uh, all the flowers are arranged at the same level okay so this type of inflorescence is just like umbrella and the second type of inflorescence where the main axis is shortened is known as corium here the flower just like umbrella the flowers are arranged at the same level but the difference is that here all the flowers have stalks of different lengths okay so they are stalks are not arising from the same point okay the lower uh, or, or the lateral or the flowers or the side flowers they have uh, stalks of uh, they have longer stalks as compared to the inner flowers where the stalks are quite shortened okay so this these are corium and umbel are the types of the inflorescence where the main axis is shortened okay the third type of inflorescence is where the main axis is flat okay here there are three sub types of the inflorescence that are known as concave convex and head or capitulum in case of uh, this type of inflorescence in case of head or capitulum all the flowers are compact and, and they are arranged in a they uh, bunch on the main axis okay and uh, if uh, this capitulum or head is of concave shape then this type of inflorescence is known as concave inflorescence while if uh, this is uh, uh, this head or capitulum is uh, facing upward just like convex okay then this is known as the convex type of inflorescence so this is the detail of the racemose inflorescence where the main axis is elongated and flowers are arranged in an acropetal manner i have just told you what is meant by the acropetal manner then we discussed the three main categories of this type of inflorescence uh, where the main axis is elongated in second uh, type of uh, uh, second category where the main axis is shortened and in third category where the main axis is flat and then we will discuss the subtypes of 
these three categories of inflorescence. This is just the detail of all the types of inflorescence that we've just discussed and uh, the examples of each and every type of inflorescence is also given on this slide. The second ma major type of inflorescence is known as cymose inflorescence and the difference between racemose and cymose inflorescence is that in case of racemose, the flowers are arranged on the main axis in an acropetal manner while in this case, the flowers are arranged on the main axis in a bacipetal manner. And what is meant by the bacipetal manner? The terminal flower is the oldest while the lateral ones are younger, just opposite to the racemose inflorescence, okay? There is another dif difference between cymose and racemose inflorescence is that in case of racemose inflorescence, it does not, the main axis does not end in a flower, but in case of cymose inflorescence, the main axis ends in a flower and after the development of this flower at its apex, the growth of that axis is stopped. It does not grow any further, okay? What does it, uh, what does it mean? The axis which develops the terminal flower it culminates in a flower and its growth is ceased, okay? And uh, the flowers in this case of uh, inflorescence may be pedicellate, stalked, or sessile, that is without stalk, okay? This type of inflorescence is uh, divided into three subtypes, monocasial, dicasial, and polycasial, okay? What is monocasial cymose inflorescence? It is a type of inflorescence in which the lateral axis arise or develop only on one side of the main axis. Okay, and each axis, the growth of each axis is ceased after the development of a flower at its apex, okay, or at its tip, okay. While in the case of the dicasial cymose inflorescence, the lateral axis, they arise from both sides of the main axis. Then in case of uh, polycasial cymose inflorescence, the lateral axis arise from uh, like the multiple branches arise from the main axis, okay? And every axis growth is stopped after the development of a terminal flower at its tip. Okay, students, uh, the third major type of inflorescence is known as compound inflorescence. It is, uh, as the name indicates, it uh, when, when there are multiple branches of racemose or cymose inflorescence, that will be termed as compound inflorescence, okay? So what happens in this type of inflorescence, the main axis branches repeatedly once or twice in the racemose or cymose manner, okay? In the former case, it becomes a compound raceme and in the later case, it becomes a compound cymose. In case of multiple branches of racemose, it becomes a racemose compound raceme and uh, in case of uh, the multiple branches of cymose, it becomes compound cymose inflorescence, okay? And it has further five subtypes. The first one is known as compound raceme or panicle, okay? And the panicle is shown here in, uh, on this slide where you can see the main axis is elongated it is just like a, a spike of the racemose inflorescence, but uh, here are the multiple branches of the spike, okay? Like, uh, like the main axis is elongated and it bears the stalked flowers on the multiple axes, okay? While in case of compound cyme, 
it is just like a cymos in fluorescence but here the world, uh, branches are multiple or extensive branches that are there on the main axis okay compound umbel when umbel is just like an umbrella and when there are uh, further sub branches of this umbrella like uh, in fluorescence this will be known as compound umbel okay compound spike in case of multiple spikes okay multiple branches of the spike okay while compound corium is just like a corium in fluorescence but uh, here in this case there will be multiple or the extensive branches of the corium in fluorescence okay so this type of inflorescence is known as compound in fluorescence these were the three major types of the inflorescence that are commonly found in plants this is just a flow, uh, flow chart showing all the uh, ma three major types of inflorescence and then their subtypes are also mentioned okay and um, here it, it also contains the special types of uh, the inflorescence that we are going to discuss in our later slides okay students now let's discuss the three special types of uh, inflorescence okay and uh, the first one is known as hypanthodium it is a type of inflorescence in which the main receptacle is fleshy and uh, a, hol a hollow ball like structure is present on the fleshy receptacle okay it uh, this ball like structure has an apical opening okay then three types of flowers are developed on the inner surface of uh, the receptacle okay female where the female flowers are uh, present towards the base male flowers are towards the orifice which is an opening of the uh, ball like structure and then there is another flower which is short styled and sterile flower sterile female flower this is known as gall flower which is present in between female flower and the male flower okay this is known as gall flower because it attracts the gall wasp during the pollination okay so this type of inflorescence is common in ficus species okay okay and uh, the second uh, special type of inflorescence is known as cyathium where the whole inflorescence is enclosed in a cup shaped structure which is known as cyathium that is why or cyathea that is why this type of inflorescence is known as cyathium here the flowers are of one sex with male and female flowers usually born on the same plant and petals are rarely present in this type of inflorescence okay here each uh, flower uh, inflorescence it uh, contains a single female flower consisting of a single pistil which is surrounded by several male flowers and each of the male flowers has a single stamen okay so this is a special type of inflorescence which is known as cyathium only one female flower with one uh, pistil is there and it is surrounded by several male flowers okay and each male flower has a single stamen okay the whole inflorescence is enclosed in a cup shaped structure which is known as cyathea and this type of inflorescence is common in family euphorbiaceae and the last type of inflorescence which is also known as, uh, which is also a special type of inflorescence is known as verticillaster okay Verticillaster is a mixed compound in fluorescence with pairs of sessile or subsessile diacasial cymes that are arranged in a false world of flowers. Okay, and that false world of flower is known as verticel. So these were all the types of inflorescence that we've discussed in detail. Now let's talk about the different modes of pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anthers to stigma. Okay. There are two types of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination is also known as autogamy. Okay. While cross-pollination is also known as allogamy. Okay. So self-pollination uh, is defined as a 
transfer of pollens from an anther to the stigma of the same flower okay while cross pollination is the transfer of pollen from an anther to the stigma of another flower of different plants while sometimes pollen from an anther fall on the stigma of the another flower of the same plant that type of pollination is known as gynoegamy it is a, you can say sub type of uh, the self pollination okay so let's first discuss uh, about the self pollination it is a transfer of pollen to the stigma within the same flower and is always found in bisexual flower okay uh, in most of the species self pollination is not completed and uh, in that case there are 5% chances of cross pollination to occur okay there are various mechanisms that promote or facilitates the self pollination okay we will be discussing uh, or about these mechanisms in detail one by one self pollination in, or in breeding is also known as autogamy that occurs within the flower and then there is uh, another sub type of self pollination that is known as gynoegamy that is between the flowers of the same individual okay this ad advantage of selfing or inbreeding is that it ensures a propagule formation okay the propagules that are used to propagate the plants okay is actually then that uh, but the disadvantage of uh, the self pollination is the reduced to abstain genetic variability okay since it is uh, uh, like uh, self pollination and uh, asexual reproduction that is why it uh, the plants that are developed through this uh, selfing or the inbreeding they lack the genetic variability then there is another terminology that is known as al autogamy okay and it is defined as the occurrence of self and cross pollination both at the same time okay so when cross pollination and self pollination or out crossing and in breeding they occur at the same time Uh, the condition is known as al autogamy okay when we talk about the flowers in uh, with reference to self or the cross pollination there are two major types of the flowers the chiasmogamous flowers and the cleistogamous flowers okay chiasmogamous are normal open flowers while cleistogamous uh, are the flowers that remain closed now let's talk about uh, the mechanisms that uh, facilitate the self pollination okay these include bisexuality which is uh, the condition when uh, male and female sexual organs they are present in the same flower okay and the flower is known as bisexual flower so bisexuality may facilitate the self pollination okay while homogamy is the condition where male and female sexual organs they mature at the same time this also facilitates the self pollination uh then the other factors that may facilitate the process of self pollination are cleistogamy and chiasmogamy okay in case of cleistogamy flowers do not open at all and they ensure the complete self pollination okay so in uh, cleistogamy flowers they remain closed all the time and there is no chance of cross pollination but in case of chiasmogamy in certain species flowers open only after the pollination has taken place okay they do open but they open uh, after the pollination has taken place okay so a chiasmogamous flower opens at maturity exposing stamens and style to allow fertilization but uh, since 
the pollination has already taken place that is why chasmogamy is also a factor or the condition that facilitates the self pollination then the fifth factor that may facilitate the self pollination is that in certain crops like tomato and brinjal stigma are closely surrounded by anthers okay so anthers of the same uh, pollens uh, from the anther of the same flower they pollinate the stigma of that particular flower and this condition also ensures the self pollination okay then another factor that may facilitate the self pollination is that in a few species stigma they become receptive and elongate through staminal column and which ensures uh, self pollination okay so they become receptive and elongate through the staminal column okay and um, uh, during this process okay uh, the self pollination occurs then the last condition or the last factor that facilitates the self pollination is that in certain crops like pea bean soya bean flowers are open but their stigma and anthers are hidden by the floral organs that they are not exposed and there are uh, very less or 0% chances of the cross pollination okay so this condition also leads to the self pollination Okay, so these are the seven factors. There are the, the seven mechanisms or the seven conditions that are um, uh, facilitating the process of self pollination. Okay. Then there are various mechanisms that uh, prevent the process of self pollination. That means, in that case, there are higher chances of cross pollination. And these uh, mechanisms or the factors are when stamens and carpels they mature at different times. Okay, so uh, these uh, 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 the stigma in these uh, this condition or in this factor, uh, they are pollinated by the pollens from anthers of another flower or another plant. Okay, or the male and female reproductive arg organs are arranged so that the animal pollinator. Won't transfer the pollen from anthers to stigma of the same flower. Okay, and the third possibility or the third mechanism that uh, may prevent the cell pollination is the biochemical self incompatibility that block pollen tube growth. Okay, so in this case, pollen tube does not grow or pollen tube growth is ceased. Okay, due to the self incompatibility. Of stigma and anther. Okay, so this was all about uh, today's uh, lecture, like in which we've discussed the uh, various types of uh, inflorescence. Okay, we've discussed the six major types of uh, inflorescence uh, in detail. We've also discussed their examples. Then we've discussed um, the self and the cross pollination, and uh, uh, then uh, we uh, we. I have talked about uh, the various mechanisms that facilitate the self pollination okay now if you have any question you can uh, ask during an interactive session that will be on wednesday at 12 o'clock so cross pollination is the transfer of pollen from a flower of one plant to the stigma of the other flower of different plant okay so cross pollination uh, is done by various ways like wind, water, insect or animals and different terminologies related to these ways uh, are used like when it is uh, done by wind it is known as anemophily. When uh, cross pollination is done by water this is known as hydrophily. By insects it is known as entomophily by animals it is known as uh, zoophily and when cross pollination is done by birds this is known as ornithophily okay cross pollination in, is done in different uh, crops like bajra maize sunflower alfalfa etc okay there are certain cases when cross pollination is not complete in that case there are 5 to 10 percent ch chances of self pollination to occur so now let's discuss uh, the various mechanisms that may facilitate cross-pollination. 
okay uh, the mechanisms that are involved in uh, the facilitation of cross pollination they include diacin plants i is, is there like presence of one flower uh, one reproductive flower on one plant and the other reproductive flower is present on the other plant okay so diacin plants includes uh, it is uh, either gynodiacy or androdiacy gynodiacy mean presence of female reproductive flower on a plant okay androdiacy means presence of male reproductive flower on a plant okay then uh, uh, there was another mechanism or a factor that is known as dichogamy it also facilitates a cross pollination and dichogamy is the uh, maturity of male and female flowers at uh, different times okay so dichogamy can be either protandry or protogyny protandry when male flowers flowers uh, mature first and it is known as protogyny when female flowers mature first okay so this dichogamy also facilitates cross pollination then there is another factor that is known as heterostyly like the uh, there are different lengths of the style this also facilitates cross pollination okay then the fourth factor that uh, may facilitate the cross pollination is known as hercogamy okay so we will uh, be talking of hercogamy in detail in the later slides okay and the fifth factor that is uh, involved in the facilitation of the cross pollination is self incompatibility now let's discuss all these factors in detail so this uh, slide is showing uh, like uh, the dichogamy and its two different types like protogyny and protandry okay you can see the protogyny and protandry in the images okay in case of protogyny the female reproductive flower is present on a plant and in case of proto protandry the male reproductive flower is present on the plant okay so the next factor that facilitates the cross pollination is heterostyly that may be uh, diastyly or tristyly in case of diastyly the, uh, uh, there may be either uh, the length of the style may be either uh, too short or too long okay in case of ties a uh, tri styly there are three types of uh, like um, uh, styles like long mid and short styles and these different uh, uh, lengths of the style they facilitate the process of cross pollination like you can see in the image where uh, style is too too short okay so there is a uh, uh, there is a more difference or the distance between the anther and the style and the pollens are from the anther of the same flower they are unable to uh, fertilize uh, that particular style or the, that particular female uh, flower okay so in this case uh, there would be higher chances of cross pollination instead of the self ones okay while in uh, another case where style is too long it is that long that anthers are present uh, near the base of the style okay in this case also and uh, the, the pollen from this anther would also be uh, uh, like uh, unable to uh, fertilize uh, the uh, particular style or the female reproductive uh, flower of the same flower so this would also facilitate the cross pollination then the next factor that is uh, uh, involved in the facilitation of the cross pollination or that facilitates the cross pollination is known as hercogamy now this hercogamy is the presence of physical barrier or any obstacle between the anther and the stigma and this factor ensures the cross pollination okay like for example in certain crops like leucine, uh, leucine or alfalfa the stigma are covered by the waxy film and it does not become receptive unless this waxy film is broken by the honey bees so hence this is uh, like the stigma is uh, covered by the waxy film the pollens from the anthers of the same flower are unable to fertilize the stigma of this particular flower thus this would facilitate 
the cross pollination okay then anantostyle is another terminology that is uh, the deflection of the style either to the left like left styled or to the right side of the floral axis this has evolved in at least 10 and used from families okay so these are the different factors that facilitate the cross pollination self there are very less chances of self pollination to occur in the presence of all these mechanisms or the factors then the other two factors that uh, facilitate the process of cross pollination are self incompatibility and male sterility in case of self incompatibility it refers to the failure of pollen from a flower from the same flower to fertilize uh, that particular flower or other flowers on the same plants okay here is a mistake it is written here some plants this is same plant okay it may be sporophytic it's not saprophytic students it is a mistake on the slide okay so this is sporophytic or gametophytic for example mustard tobacco sunflowers radish okay while in case of male sterility it refers to the absence of functional pollen grains in a hermaphrodite flower what is a hermaphrodite flower it is a flower that contains both male and female reproductive uh, organs in uh, okay so the male sterility genetically determined inability for fertilization to occur between gametes that are derived from one individual okay so pollens of uh, uh, the same flower a hermaphrodite flower where uh, both male and reproductive organs are present the pollens of that particular male reproductive organ of that particular flower the same flower are uh, like sterile they are unable to fertilize the uh, the stigma of the same flower so this also facilitates the cross pollination okay how like the, then the pollens from a different flower from a different plant they would come and fertilize the stigma of this particular flower so these are all the mechanisms or the factors that facilitate the process of cross pollination all right students what happens after uh, the pollination has taken place or after the landing of pollen on the receptor stigma uh, we have already discussed in uh, detail that uh, is the double fertilization occurs okay so i'm just going to revise it like pollination uh, uh, we discussed about the pollination which is the transfer of pollen from an anther to the stigma and uh, what happens after the pollen uh, has landed over the receptive stigma the double fertilization occurs in which one uh, one sperm fuses with the egg and it forms a zygote the other sperm fuses with the pollen nuclei and forms an endosperm okay so what happens pollen grain germinates and produces a pollen tube that extends down between the cells of the style towards the ovary pollen tube discharges two sperms into the embryo sac pollination enables gametes to come together within a flower in angiosperms the dominant uh, sporophytic generation produces spores that develop within the flowers into the male gametophytes that is the pollen grains and it produces the female gametes in an embryo sac as far as the structure of the pollen grain is concerned or the pollination uh, or the pollen biology is concerned pollen grain consists of an aperture which you can see in this slide aperture is uh, 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 just like uh, uh, an opening from which pollen tube emerges out okay and then the sperms travel through this pollen tube while the exine is the outer covering of the pollen which protects it from the environmental stresses okay so this is all about uh, uh, structure of a pollen okay now let's discuss the development of the new sporophyte okay this is also known as uh, uh, the life cycle of an angiosperm okay so uh, let's discuss how uh, life cycle of an what, ha what happens during the life cycle of an angiosperm or what happens after the fertilization has taken place and the zygote has been 
developed after the fusion of uh, sperm and egg okay so the, the uh, so the zygote uh, is uh, developed and it is divided into two cells it is the terminal cell and the basal cell that you can see in this slide okay then the basal cell remains same while the terminal cell undergoes multiple divisions and is converted into a suspensor and a pro embryo okay then pro embryo further uh, suspensor remains the same and the pro embryo further divides into uh, mul a ground meristem and the pro a pro cambium and uh, the protoderm okay protoderm we have the protoderm is an outer covering or it's just like an epidermis it is the outer layer while uh, procambium is uh, the structure from which uh, the vascular bundle that is the xylem and phloem develop later okay then this structure uh, that you can see in this slide is known as cotyledons cotyledon consists of uh, shoot apex from which shoot arises and uh, the root apex from which the radical um, uh, uh, comes out and the suspensor remains the same with the passage of time then uh, around the, uh, these structures a protective coat is uh, developed and the whole structure is converted into a seed so this is uh, a life cycle of an angiosperm or the development of the new sporophyte like uh, how, uh, that is what, uh, how the sporophyte is developed after the development of a zygote so these are just examples that uh, how fruit is developed from uh, a flower okay so this is an example of bell pepper like ovary wall is converted into flesh or uh, of the pepper ovary is converted into pepper fruit and ovules are converted into seed this is just showing how seed is uh, developed after the fertilization has taken place okay the integuments of the diploid cell is converted into the seed coat okay then uh, 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 the central cell or the triploid are, uh, are converted into an endosperm and uh, the fusion of uh, egg and sperm results into a zygote that is developed into an embryo okay then this slide is showing like uh, how uh, what happens after the germination of the seed or how uh, the seed is converted into a seedling okay so first of all imbibation takes place in which seed absorbs uh, enough water okay then enzymes uh, in the endosperm are digested and then uh, the first organ that uh, is uh, developed from the seed is uh, uh, known as uh, radical okay this is uh, this is the first shoot okay then the second organ that develops from the seed is um, a shoot or it is also known as plumule okay then these are the different parts of the seed first of all seed coat which is a protective layer it protects the seed from the environmental stresses hypocotyl is the uh, is the part of the plumule or the part of the shoot that is present below the cotyledons it is uh, an embryonic root, uh, root. okay apicotyl uh, is, is the part of the seed that is present above the cotyledons or the seedling okay that is present above the seed uh, cotyledons cotyledons and it is known as an embryonic shoot as we were discussed earlier the evolutionary advantages of the seeds are uh, uh, like uh, the reduced gametophytic generation okay then uh, the development of the heterospory like the, the heterospory is the uh, presence of uh, the gametes that can be distinguished into male and female gametes okay then uh, the ovules are produced and uh, which are uh, used to propagate the plants and then uh, the pollens uh, are the part of the, uh, the seeds or the, the pollens are the part of the plant that are uh, involved in the pollination okay okay students uh, so fruits uh, are classified into several types depending upon their developmental origin okay so there are uh, three types of fruits simple fruit aggregate fruit and multiple fruit 
सिंपल फ्रूट इज द टाइप ऑफ फ्रूट विच इज डेवलप फ्रॉम ए सिंगल कार्पल और सेवरल फ्यूज कार्पल ऑफ ऑफ वन फ्लावर ओके सो दीज कार्पल आर फ्यूज जस्ट लाइक दैट दे कैन नॉट बी डिस्टिंग्विश इन टू डिफरेंट कार्पल ओके द सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ फ्रूट विच इज नोन एज एग्रीगेट फ्रूट इट इज डेवलप फ्रॉम मेनी सेपरेट कार्पल फ्रॉम वन फ्लावर ओके and then the third type of the fruit is known as multiple fruit it is a type of the fruit which is developed from many carpels of many flowers and different uh, and then the examples of different uh, uh, fruits like simple aggregate and multiple fruits are also given in this slide so these are the different types based on the de uh, uh, developmental origin now these are the examples of the uh, fruit we've just uh, discussed like peach is a peach is an example of a simple uh, fruit like one flower one carpel one ovary and one seed then uh, apple is a type of uh, aggregate fruit in which uh, there is one flower but five carpels many ovaries and many seeds okay then citrus fruit is also an example of uh, multiple fruit in which only one flower is there but many carpels many ovaries and many seeds are produced in citrus fruit now as far as the coevolution of plants and animals uh, uh, is concerned okay animals and the birds are uh, uh, used to help the plants for the pollination okay so natural cell selection reinforces the interactions because they improve the reproductive success of both partners okay flowers and pollination uh, the, there is a link between the flowers and the pollination a major advantage of flower is that they have allowed angiosperms to use other organisms to move their pollen about okay then bees bats birds and uh, others all they all are used to transport the pollen from one flower to another uh, how uh, it is done they are attracted to the flowers by the nectar and pollen provided by the plant and when they visit multiple flowers they move pollen from one to the next now uh, this slide is showing the evolutionary link between angiosperms and the animals okay so this uh, here uh, the different images uh, are uh, showing like how pollination is uh, done by different uh, ways like through different animals like in the first one flower is being pollinated by the honey bees in the second one a flower is poll uh, being pollinated by the humming bees okay and in the third one a flower is being pollinated by the nocturnal animals like bats okay so students this is uh, all about today's uh, lecture we have uh, discussed the different types of uh, the fruits uh, their examples and the evolutionary link between the plants and the animals and the birds and uh, we've also um, discussed the cross pollination and uh, the different factors that uh, facilitate the cross pollination okay so now if you have any question you can ask during an interactive session